Hello, internet friends, and welcome back for another uh, episode, video, what should we call it? Uh, you know, visual feed, visual stimulation uh, of simple Haskell. And um, today we're going to be talking about foldable. And so I expect this to be a very short lesson um, because there's not a ton to say about foldable. I think it's this is definitely where I would say. Uh, we are starting to get into lessons about um, stuff that you don't direly need to know. And um, why I say that is, well, you will see foldable stuff uh, in your endeavors, um, but, like, you don't need to use foldable yourself. Uh, as long as you have a knowledge of basic recursion, then you could effectively implement foldable yourself um, if you came up with the idea and um, yeah it, it's it, it, it is although it, it, that said it is a very nice um, extremely useful um, <clears throat> useful class and so let's let's start by setting a prompt um, you know what I actually hate that why is it saying hello to me? Makes more sense. Uh, so, um, let's start by looking at the foldable class. And it has a ton of functions here. Um, and now we get into where we see this. Um, so, if, in a couple last videos, we have seen um, this foldable T. And so, the easiest example to think of is a list. A list is foldable. Um, really anything that is uh, probably anything that is a, a monoid is foldable. Uh, I can't imagine a case in which a monoid is not foldable. I don't know, it, but um, it, many, many things that are mono. I, and, and don't call me on that because that's a, that's not a factual statement so much as a you know some of the time it, this is true statement. Um, you know, for example, uh, a set would be foldable. Maps, which are um, you know maps are a monoid as well as being a foldable uh, case. Um, and you'll even see there's foldable for maybe. And so I'll, I will come back to this. I will actually um, just put this as a note to self. So I do want to talk about that uh, just for the sake of completeness. It's not the most important for the understanding of what foldable is. But anyways, the core function of foldable is uh, this launch right here. And oh, I can't do that. Um... This fold R or folder. And so folder is of the type. Uh, well, it's it's pretty complicated to break down the, the type. Um, and it doesn't really tell us what it does. This is kind of where we're starting to get into a little bit more advanced reasoning about um, our type signatures for real. And. Um, that's really it, eh? Yeah, so that's it. And what this is saying is, as so the core pieces to think about is we have this B, um, and we're going to return something of the type B as well. And then we have this foldable uh, T wrapping an A. And so as I mentioned, the easiest example of thinking is a list. So if I do this, I can reduce uh, from the type signature and now what is this saying? So, okay, I have some return type B, thinking from right to left. I have some return type B. I have a list of A and a B. Okay, so I have a value of the same type as the last value, or the return value. And then I see that A and B are used in this function here. And that B is returned in this function. Uh, and it looks like I am merging somehow 
A and B. Uh, and since it's, you know, um, I can provide the function, I can really combine A and B however I like. I can do any arbitrary logic between A and B that yields me a B. Um, even if it's just simple, as simple as, you know, tossing out both values and then putting some B. Uh, like, for example, if I had, you know, just some silly function like f takes an x and y and then returns, a z, you know, a 1, which does nothing with f and y, or x and y, I should say. Um, it's just simply, you know, returning 1 each and every single time, no matter what I give it. Um, so, yeah, that, and that's, that's folder. So we're, let's actually do an example of folder. And I'm just going to do one here. Um, and I think you can probably guess from watching what I am doing. Or what this is doing. And maybe not here. I mean, because that's still a lot. So let's go down to 5. So I use the plus function. Um, which uh, doesn't really... It's not necessarily a to B to B, it's kind of more A to A to A, but that's still valid because, you know, having two different uh, letters in the type signature means that they don't, only really means they don't have to be the same type. Um, and then I guess if, if, you know, if my foldable is a list, that means that my A's are uh, an int. Uh, and I say int, you know, of course it's a num, but I think of it as an int. Um, and then I have this zero. So what is zero? Zero is my, my B here. Um, now what if I did this? And this is probably going to illustrate something here. I believe this is the right way. Yeah. So, okay, that didn't work. That did that. What about if I say one? Why is such a big difference? Well, what is going on here? So, um, and again, you might, might guess how this is working just from seeing these two examples. Um, but let's actually list out one to five. And, um, let me think. If we have fold R, it would be. Let me pause for a second. I want to just make sure my facts are straight. They are indeed. Okay. So, um, so what are we doing when we do folder? So the way that I was explained how folder works is that we're going to take this function that we pass in and we are going to replace the spine of the list with it. And so the spine of the list is actually, I guess, terminology I haven't really used. Um, but the spine of the list refers to all of the cons operators which put together the list um, and kind of carry these values with them. So let's think this through. We're going to say um, year plus, 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 and plus. Except we have an issue here because we cannot add a five and an empty list. This is invalid. So what does folder do? Well, so there's two two values you might have noticed, um, and one is folder, which is our main function. That's what you that's what you want to use unless you have a very um, very like what's what I'm looking for. Um, unless there's a very specific reason, which is uh, highly use case dependent, um, fold L is actually backwards, so that's why we want to use fold R in terms of how it operates on the list. And so, in the case of fold R, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this empty list with our identity element. So, you guys might remember when we did recursion. Where was it? List, was it? Ah, yes. We talked about, well, when we talked about recursion and when we talked about monoids, we talked about the identity element. Did 
type of folder, this B here is our identity element. So the element, which is going to do nothing, um, right? So plus our identity element is going to be zero um, for, uh, I suppose for, you know, just, sorry, multiplication, my brain all over the place. For multiplication, it will be one. For division, it will be one. Um, for subtraction, it will be zero. Uh, for exponents, uh, I suppose it would be um, one as well. Like if we were to say like x to the n, um, what would give us the value of x? Or how can we say, right, how can we satisfy this that x to the n is equal to x? What values of n make this true? There's only one, and that is one. <laughs> um, no pun intended? I don't know. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's a billion of this. Uh, for example, you know, true is our identity element, and so, yeah. Um, it, it, well, it, it, sorry, true, I should, I should finish that, that thought, is uh, our identity element for and because it will not change the value or change the output at all um, by having true as an input to uh, our and function, right? True and true, where let, let's say the identity element is on our left side, um, we're gonna get true. So we're gonna get the left hand side argument I'm going to say left hand side in reference to this true and if we look at false and true we also have the left hand side so therefore true is the identity element and so now we kind of finally come to the end of this thinking around I'm just going to do this because this will uh, complain eventually um, yeah, there we are. Now we come to the, the end of that kind of thinking, or not the end of that thinking, the end of learning that thinking with folder. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, it, this B is always going to be our identity element. And then this is how we would put two elements together, right? So at first, we're putting together uh, one and two, and then the result of that with three the result of that with four, the result of that with five, and the result of that with zero. And so if we actually evaluate this, and we just slowly do our operation through, I'm gonna put an equal here just so it looks like, um, you know, old school math, working through the equations. Um, so we're gonna have three plus three plus four plus five plus zero. We're going to have three plus three is six. So six plus four plus five plus zero. Whew. That gives us then six plus four is 10. And then five plus zero. Then we have 15 plus zero, which, hmm, what could this be? This could be, okay, the one, uh, okay, 15. So um we end up with 15 and from the result of our folder and, and now if we check this well i already did this but you know for the sake of the addition changes all the time so let's check and it is still in fact 15. um and that's how folder works that is the core function of foldable and that said you know well so why is there all these other um functions here and um i mean I, I guess I don't know how to answer that directly, but, um, well, I guess the reason they're here instead of somewhere else, um, I guess it's A, because they have some utility, um, Captain Obvious, and because they are defined in terms of folder. Um, although I'm not sure about null. Um, I think that's, I don't think, I don't know why you would need folder for that. Although I suppose it is foldable, um, and you know what, that kind of breaks my uh, assumptions. So, uh, or my assumptions about how to explain this. I guess null um, does apply to any kind of foldable uh, case. 
um, much in the same way that, you know, Null could really be like another, um, it could almost, it, it, you know, in another way, I, I would be less surprised to see Null with the Monoid class, um, to say if the Monoid is empty or not, but um, I guess this is really just checking if any container, which is defined as a, or has a, a foldable instance, um, is empty or not. So, for example, if I say null, this says true, null one is false, uh, but otherwise, everything here is defined in terms of, uh, well, actually, I, I suppose these are all defined for sure in terms of folder. I'm trying to think. Um, I, I mean, I guess you could actually define Elem in terms of folder. And let me see how you would do that. Uh, just for fun. Elem is, so Elem takes an A in the list of A. And I guess you would say, well, the question here is how can I define it in terms of folder? I know I could define it in terms of um, recursion, plain old recursion. But I guess, oh, you know what I could say is, how can I make this work? So if I have an A and a B, and I want to return a, I don't know, actually. You know what? I guess I'm not sure how it, um, it works. But anyways, let's let's keep it simple and go in terms of maximum. Um, so in the case of maximum, it would really look like instead of, well, if we have, I'm just going to keep it to three here just to keep things simple or, you know, quick. We are effectively going to be writing this logic here um, by replacing the spine with the function. And we would say that the max of one and two is two. So the max of two and three is three. And that's how we would read. If we want to, again, just evaluate it through, we would say two max three, because we have found that the max of one and two is two. Um, same with sum and product. I mean, we've literally shown how sum would work here. Product is uh, quite simple, but um, yeah. And, um, and, and and I guess really what product would look like is just going to be product equals um, folder one, or sorry, folder multiplication one, of x's and yeah um alum though i feel like you know what i feel like alum is actually You know what? Let me check this. I'm 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 very curious now. Uh, I feel like there's a way you can write elem in terms of folder. Oh no, it's any. Okay, right. That makes sense. So I guess I was right. I always am. Um, anyways, the minimum function you would need to write is folder for any new foldable instance. Um, and I think I have absolutely explained the crap out of this. So. Uh, once again, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed. Happy coding at whatever time it is for you. Um, and please, you know, give. Uh, please let me know of any comments, uh, any suggestions you have, any critique. Uh, I would love to hear it. And yeah, uh, happy coding.